Hello, this is a longitudinal segment of the vertebral column. And I'm just going to rotate this to show you the side view, the posterior view, the other side view. And again, we are back to the cut section. So if we look closely, we can see that the most obvious abnormality is that the vertebral bodies are of differing heights. In particular, this vertebral body has a biconcave shape and it is markedly compressed compared to the adjacent vertebral bodies. We can also just about make out a fracture line here horizontally. So there is a compression fracture of this vertebral body. The bony trabeculae also appear a little bit more spongy than usual. The diagnosis here is osteoporosis with compression fracture. It is also important to point out that the intervertebral discs appear somewhat swollen or thickened and they have this biconvex shape which contributes to this concave appearance of the vertebral bodies. Let's take a look at osteoporosis. First of all, let's define this term osteopenia, and this is defined as a decrease in bone mass up to 2.5 standard deviations below the mean peak bone mass which is achieved in young adulthood. Osteoporosis is a more severe form, and it's defined as osteopenia that is significant enough to increase the risk of fractures. Hence, uh, the decrease in bone mass is at least 2.5 standard deviations below the mean. Uh, this is usually diagnosed radiographically, and if severe enough, it can actually be seen on plain x-rays, not only in terms of the bone density, but also um, in terms of the shapes of the vertebral bodies. And quantitative bone density tests. Osteoporosis can be due to many different causes. One of the commonest is senile osteoporosis, which is age-related, where there is reduced ability to produce new bone with age. Uh, reduced physical activity and immobilization can also contribute to this. Hence, uh, it is always important for the elderly in particular to stay active. Genetic polymorphisms um, can also give rise to uh, the actual peak bone mass that is achieved in life and therefore increase susceptibility to osteoporosis. In addition, uh, certain uh, nutritional factors, for example, intake of calcium, particularly during the period of rapid bone growth, is important and contributes to peak bone mass. Hormonal influences can also give rise to increased risk of osteoporosis, in particular in postmenopausal women. The deficiency in estrogen can increase bone resorption overall. Clinically, if there is osteoporosis, this actually predisposes patients to fractures, which can be painful. They can give rise to deformity, for example, in the vertebral column. Patients can actually be shorter and they can have kyphosis. Uh, and of course, there can be fractures at other sites uh, from relatively minor trauma. Grossly, the bony cortex appears to be thinned and the bone may collapse due to microfractures, but also more obvious gross fractures may be present, as you can see here. And if you take a very thin section of the vertebra, you may actually see accentuation of the vertical bony trabeculae and relative loss of the horizontal trabeculae, and there may be widening of the intervertebral discs as we see here. This is just uh, another example of a vertebral column. This is not a normal vertebral column, but if you look at this area where the cross-section of the bone is relatively normal, you can see that it appears somewhat less porous compared to the osteoporotic bone. Microscopically, we can see that the bony trabeculae are much thinner in the osteoporotic bone compared to the non-osteoporotic bone, and there may also be fractures and microfractures. Hence, in summary, we are looking at a longitudinally sectioned vertebral column, and we can see that there are compression fractures of the vertebral bodies on a background of osteoporosis where the cut surface of the vertebral bodies appear somewhat more porous and spongy than usual, and there is accompanying thickening of the intervertebral discs. Thank you.